Good morning, this is Tide Pool Tim. It's a Saturday morning out on the beach down in a place called Gleason's Cove and I uh, wanted to do a little lesson on uh, barnacles for all, all you kids out there that may be doing a little marine biology or ocean unit. You see a lot of barnacles on this beach and they're all attached to a kind of a cobbly rock here. You also see some fucus, some rockweed, that's that uh, brown algae that's uh, att also attached to these rocks. Uh, barnacles have a pretty neat little uh, lifestyle. They spend most of their life attached to a rock and they're filter feeders. They have a little structure that kind of waves through the water, you may have seen before. And they're, they use that to sort of net up or scoop up plankton. They bring it into their, their little uh, shell, if you will. And that's what they eat and that's how they grow. Now barnacles uh, spawn. Uh, and they do this by releasing their sex cells, their gametes, out into the water. Hopefully uh, they're fertilized because they live close together. So egg and sperm meet. And then the little baby barnacle goes drifting around out in the, in the bay and in the water column. After a period of time, a tiny uh, larval barnacle will settle down and land on a rock. Now hopefully it will land on a rock that's devoid or doesn't have any other barnacles on it. Such as this rock, there's only one, two, three, four, five, maybe ten barnacles on that rock. But look over here on this rock, tons of barnacles. Now it's, if you're going to be a filter feeder and you're surrounded by other barnacles, it's going to be hard for you to get good food. But if you're in with other barnacles, you're sort of protected. So a little baby barnacle in amongst in these few little holes amongst these big barnacles can can live and survive. And the thing that barnacles worry about are grazers, things like uh, like limpets, snails, uh, things like periwinkles, dog whelks, uh, maybe even moon snails uh, that are going along and they're they're feeding, they're grazing along the uh, along the rock surface and they're scraping off baby barnacles. So here's a here's a periwinkle. If it's feeding when the tide's in, it's going back and forth. And if there's a little tiny barnacle settle in there, it's going to scrape it right up and kill it and eat it. You know, and that's pretty much how the natural world lives. Where everything, something is living, something else is coming along and eating it. That's, uh, you know, food chain stuff. So when the barnacles get caught uh, or settle down on a rock that's uh, very uh, clustered or, or, you know, there's not much real estate there, not much space. One, they get good protection, but two, they get poor feed. So if you settle down on a rock that's totally empty, like this rock doesn't have too many barnacles on it, it's a good place to feed. You get lots of water, and so you get a lot of food, and you grow faster, but there's a chance you're going to be scraped up and eaten by some predatory snail um, or other forager. It could be a sea urchin, for instance. So as uh, barnacles do get packed in, they, they realize uh, somehow that they're not getting enough uh, water circulation and they're not feeding very well. So they keep growing their shell taller and taller and taller. Now these barnacles are pretty short and squat. They apparently have enough. Uh, they're getting a pretty good uh, food source. But if we go up the beach here, we can, I can show you some barnacles that uh, have grown taller and taller because they were so closely packed together that they had to grow up and get uh, into a, uh, or to, to get taller you know, to try and reach the food source. And you can see those barnacles there are, well, maybe a half inch or three quarters of an inch. There may be other ones here that we can find that are even more clustered together. Well, here's a good example. These are almost an inch tall. And, in, you know, inside each one of these little barnacles is a little arthropod. And, you know, arthropods are things like uh, horseshoe crabs and spiders and grasshoppers and shrimp and can see wherever you see a gap is where a barnacle and if you look down here you see all little bits of broken and dead barnacles you know they live and they die every day and uh, when the tide comes in which it is right now uh, eventually this this little group of barnacles is going to be underwater and they'll all have start feeding again and as they feed they get larger here's a shows you one large barnacle some medium-sized barnacles and a few small barnacles pretty small rock though there's not much space for expanding there. As they expand, they also kind of grow under other barnacles and they pop each other off. So there's competition for space in, in that way as well. But the, you know, there's pretty much two, two types of barnacle rocks. The ones where there's plenty of space and they grow low and squat and there's plenty of feeding room and then you have these other clusters of barnacles, which are older too, but they've grown taller um, in response to not being getting enough uh, water circulation and wanting to to reach out into the water column and collect food. So uh, that's it on barnacles. Of course, there's lots of different kinds. The genus, uh, uh, the scientific genus for bar uh, barnacles here on the coast of Maine is Balanus. And uh, this one here is uh, just a common rock barnacle.
So I hope you learned a little bit about uh, barnacles. There's uh, plenty more to learn. And uh, like I said, I'm a self-educated marine biologist. I read books. I study whatever I can. I read and uh, I don't know it all. You don't know it all. If you want to learn about sea life, I say get out on the beaches, explore around, and learn by direct observation. You can always Google up the exact scientific name or the, the uh, other little details that other scientists have put together. But for me, this is what it's, what it's all about. That's it. Have a good day. This is Tidepool Tim of Gulf of Maine. Checking out.